Hello everyone, and welcome back to tonight's bedtime story. Tonight we're reading Tales to Give You Goosebumps by R.L. Steins, special edition number one with ten spooky stories inside. Tonight we're reading story number nine, Broken Dolls. You broke my doll! Tamara Baker screamed. I did not, Neil, her seven-year-old brother, protested. The arm fell off. It wasn't my fault. Tamara grabbed the doll from his hands, and the slender pink arm fell to the floor. That's the third doll you broke, Neil, she cried. Why can't you keep your paws off my doll collection? Aw, you've got plenty more, her brother muttered, pointing to Tamara's shelves and shelves of dolls. You could at least say you're sorry, Tamara scolded. Sorry, Neil said softly, and then a grin spread across his face, and he added, Not! He turned and ran out of Tamara's room. She angrily slammed her door. She replaced the broken doll on the shelf and shaked her and shook her head. Then she walked to the mirror to brush her hair. Tamara studied her reflection. She was twelve, and her face was longer and thinner than ever before. That was fine with Tamara, who wanted to look older. She had large brown eyes. They were her best feature. Her skin was tanned. Her nose was small and straight. And best of all this year, no braces. Tamara smiled. She was satisfied except for her hair. Tamara's hair was a long, dark, wavy mass that had always refused to be put up in a normal style. Tamara frowned and tugged at it. I have a bad hair day every day, she thought gloomily. She brushed it back and jammed a couple of barrettes in it. Tamara, are you coming? She heard her dad calling impatiently from downstairs. He hated waiting. He was taking the family to the craft fair at the fairgrounds, and he insisted on getting there in the fairgrounds when they opened up at 10 a.m. Tamara opened her door and stepped out onto something squishy. It made a squeaking sound, and Tamara jumped a mile. And then she spotted Neil peeking out of his door, laughing his head off. I scared you! I scared you! He crowed. Tamara picked up the object. It was a bath toy inside of a sock, placed just where Tamara would have to step. She aimed and threw it at Neil's laughing face. He bolted for the stairs, and she chased after him. Children! Children! Mrs. Baker cried as the two circled around her. Stop this right now! She started it, Neil claimed in his whiniest voice. Mom, he broke another one of my dolls, Tamara said. Stop it! Just stop it, their mother ordered. Get in the car! Both of you. Their car ride seemed to take forever. Tamara sat in the back seat with Neil. Neil had never been able to sit still for more than ten seconds, and he squirmed and bounced and stretched his neck to see out all the windows at once. It drove Tamara crazy. Once they were at the fairgrounds, Neil went wild. He wanted to see everything and be everywhere at once. Tamara, Miss Baker said, your dad and I want to see the ceramics, but I don't want Neil around things that can break. Good thinking, Mom, Tamara replied, rolling her eyes. So why don't you take him for half an hour and then meet with your father and me at the information booth after that, Mrs. Baker suggested. Me? Take Neil? Tamara howled in horror. What do I look like, a wild animal trainer? No, Neil giggled. You look like a wild animal. Ha ha ha. Tamara could see that she was trapped. Okay, I'll do it, she grumbled. Come on, you little monster. Tamara held Neil's hand as a grip of death so that he couldn't get away. She wished she had a pair of handcuffs. She strolled around looking at the exhibits, ignoring Neil's non-stop chatter. Tamara wasn't much of a craftsperson. Her mom was the craftsy one. Mrs. Baker couldn't look at a simple t-shirt without wanting to put rhinestone studs on it. Still, Tamara enjoyed walking through the booths. There were quilts, clay pots, lots of handmade jewelry, and carved wooden toys that got even Neil's attention. Wow, how does this wooden pop gun work? Neil asked. Tamara wasn't too interested in pop guns. She turned to look at the booth across the aisle and saw the dolls. There were at least 15 or 20 of them, and they were strikingly human looking. The dolls all had different faces, different expressions. One looked sweet. Another pouting, the next was crying, and another was asleep. On and on, like a quiet nursery. Tamara stared from doll to doll. They were so real looking. She looked like she thought if she touched one, the doll would feel warm, not cold like a regular doll. She reached out. Do you like them? A raspy voice called from right behind her. Tamara jumped, and she turned and faced an old west woman that she had ever seen. 
her withered face was lined with deep crags, her white hair hung down stiff as a straw, her eyes were narrowed slits. Did you make these dolls? Tamara asked. Oh, every one, dearie. I've never seen dolls like these before. They're so real. No two are the same, the old woman replied, and they're perfect in every detail. Go ahead, take a closer look. Neil patted over to Tamara. I'm hungry, he whined. I'll get you something in a minute, Tamara snapped. Aren't you precious, the old lady crooned at Neil. Quite the little man. I think there may be a cookie around here for such a nice boy. Neil perked up at the mention of a cookie, and Tamara turned back to the doll she'd been studying. It was wearing a dark purple dress with white trim. She picked it up. Wow, it weighs as much as a real baby too, she said. That's incredible. Tamara set the doll down and turned around. As she did, she thought she saw the old lady put her hand on Neil's hand head. The gesture was odd and formal, almost like a blessing. Strangest is all... Strangest of all was the look on Neil's face. He stood still and quiet. Tamara grabs Neil's hand harder than she had intended and pulled him away from the old booth. Come on, we've got to go look, she said. Thank the lady for the cookie. Thank you, Neil grumbled through a mouthful of crumbs. Tamara and Neil met their parents, and the four of them walked around the exhibits together. They didn't go past the old doll booth again. When Mr. Baker had had enough and Mrs. Baker had bought enough goodies to keep an entire family in puff paint heaven through Christmas, they all piled into the family car and headed home. Neil didn't squirm the way he had on all the way to the crafts fair. In fact, he didn't do much of anything. He sat back in his seat, staring straight ahead. Mrs. Baker noticed Neil's unusual quiet behavior as soon as they got home, and she felt his forehead. Ted, he's running a fever, she told her husband. Probably all the excitement today, Mr. Baker replied. I'll get the baby aspirin. Neil, get into bed. I don't want to go to bed. It's daytime, Neil protested. But he went upstairs anyway. Mrs. Baker got Neil into his pajamas and brushed her, his hair. Mrs. Baker got Neil into his pajamas and brushed her hand over his head lovingly. Tamara went upstairs just as Mrs. Baker pulled her hand away, chuckling. What have you gotten into, young man? She asked, wiping away from something from her hand. You've got some kind of goop in your hair. Dolly jelly, Tamara heard Neil grumble before he drifted into a feverish sleep. Later in the afternoon, Neil was covered in a light rash. His face was pale and washed out. Looks like an allergy, Marge, Mr. Baker decided. What did he eat today? Oh, Ted, Mrs. Baker replied, sighing. What didn't he eat? Tamara felt bad that her brother was sick. She went to his room to sit with him for a little while, and he looked so pale as if his face were fading away. She placed her hand on his forehead, and it felt really hot. Neil was mumbling something in his sleep, not listening. No, dollies. Don't want to be a dolly. No, dolly. Jelly. No. Dollies? Tamara remembered the doll lady. The cookie. Maybe the cookie had something in it that had made Neil sick. She remembered watching the old woman place her hand on Neil's head. Dolly Jelly? Mom, I'm going out for a little while, okay? Tamara said, pulling on her jacket. Where are you going? Oh, just for a bike ride. Tamara hurried out the back door. She jumped on her bicycle and began pedaling furiously. The fairgrounds were a couple of miles away, and she didn't know how late the craft fair would stay open. She arrived at the fairgrounds just as the gates closed. Well, I'm here, she told herself. Now what do I do? People were packing up their crafts and closing their booths. Tamara saw the doll lady stepping out from one of the craft areas. She was carrying a box, and Tamara watched carefully as the old woman took the box to a trailer and marked exhibitors only. Staying in the shadows, Tamara crept forward to the trailer, and she watched. The doll maker stepped out of the trailer, and she kept walking back and forth, carrying one box at a time into the trailer. Tamara waited until the old woman was out of view, and then she took a deep breath and sneaked into the trailer. Her heart fluttered in her chest. Tamara searched the trailer. She kept remembering Neil was mumbling something about dollies and doll jelly. Glancing at the trailer door, she opened several boxes marked dolls and peered inside. To her surprise, these were not the dolls she'd seen on display. The faces on these dolls were completely blank. Tamara shivered. There was something creepy about dolls without any face at all. The smooth white head staring up at her like ghosts. With a shudder, Tamara opened up another box. The do this doll had a pale face, so pale that she could probably make out its features. 
She touched the doll's smooth head and on her hand came away with a smear with some kind of goop that was in Neo's hair. Dolly, Joey. Oh! Tamira cried out as the doll's features darkened and came clearer and she recognized Neo's eyes, Neo's pointy nose, Neo's mouth. W what's happening? Tam Tamira stammered out loud. She gasped at the doll in horror. The features darkened some more and Neil's face was growing clearer on the doll's head. Then she remembered how pale her brother had been looking, lying in his bed asleep. How his face had appeared to be fading away. What is this old woman doing? Tamara wondered out loud, frozen in sudden horror. I've got to stop her. Stop her? A voice said. Tamara gasped and spun around. Was it the old doll maker? No. No one was at the trailer door. Where did the sound come from? The closet. Stop her, a tiny voice repeated. Swallowing hard, Tamara pulled open the closet door with a trembling hand. Dolls, crammed into the shelves. The dolls from the crafts fair. But they couldn't be the dolls because they were moving. Reaching out, their tiny pink arms said to Tamara, No, Tamara shrieked. You can't be alive. You can't be. She shrank back from their outstretched arms. Don't touch me. Don't, she pleaded. Neil. She had to help Neil. Tamara snapped back to her senses and she slammed the closet door shut. Then she grabbed the doll with Neil's features and darted out of the trailer. Going somewhere, dearie? The old doll maker grinned at Tamara. Stay away from me, Tamara cried beneath breathlessly. I've got the doll, my brother's doll, and I'm going to the police. The old woman's eyes sharpened. Why don't you come inside and we'll talk about it, she said softly. No way, Tamira exclaimed. I saw your dolls. I know what you're doing. The old lady started towards Tamira, walking slowly but deliberately. Her face was hard and evil. You don't know what I'm doing, she said through clenched teeth. Your world has no idea of my ancient arts. Tamira suddenly felt dizzy. What did she mean, your world? Just how old was this woman? The doll maker reached into her sweater and pulled out a container. Tamara recognized the goop that Neil had called Dolly Jelly. I think this is time for you to go away, dearie, the old lady said quietly. Young people disappear so often in this century. You'll just be one more. The doll maker smeared a dab of the greasy goop onto her fingers and then she moved toward Tamara, mumbling some kind of ancient chant. Tamara struggled to move, but she couldn't. She felt like a bird being hypnotized by a snake. The old woman looked like a cold, unblinking snake slithering closer and closer. No! Tamara shrieked and dove forward. The sound of her own voice gave her strength. She grabbed the jar of goop from the old woman's hand, and then she spun around and started to run. Give that back, the doll maker called after her. Tamara saw a small wad pulling at the edge of the fairgrounds, and she raised the jar of goop and heaved it into the pool. Tamara saw a small wading pool at the edge of the fairgrounds. She raised a jar of goop and heaved it into the pool. You fool, the old woman failed, wailed. You fool, what have you done? Tamara stared in disbelief as the pool of water began to bubble and hiss. Choking clouds of black smoke rose up from the pool, and the water turned green, then blue, and then red. It swirled up in an angry waves and then splashed down hard under the billowing black smoke. When Tamara turned back, the old woman had vanished. She heard happy shrieks and cheers from the trailer. Were the dolls celebrating in there? She didn't have time to find out. She ran to her bicycle and started to jam the Neil doll into her bike pack. But to Tamara's surprise, the doll was no longer looking like Neil. Its face was smooth and blank. With a shiver that shook her whole body, Tamara tossed the doll as far as she could, and then she furiously pedaled home. Tamara, where on earth have you been? Mrs. Baker scolded. And just look at you. You're a mess. Sorry, Mom, Tamara mumbled. I'll clean up for supper. Neil popped into the kitchen. He grinned at Tamara. You look like you've been playing in the mud, he exclaimed. Piggy, piggy. Neil, you're all right, Tamara cried joyfully. She dropped to her knees and gave him an enthusiastic hug. Did you believe it? Do you believe it, Mrs. Baker said. All of a sudden, his fever dropped and he was his old self again. His bratty old self, Tamara laughed ruffling Neil's hair. Well, that's just fine with me. Everything was back to normal. Tamara decided to forget about the old doll maker and the frightening living dolls. Still forcing the old woman out of her head, 
until one night a few weeks later. Her parents had gone out and Tamara was babysitting Neil. Someone knocked on the front door. Who's there? Tamara called out. No reply. Who's there? She repeated. Still, no reply. Tamara peered out through the front window, a dark, moonless night. She didn't see anyone. Curious, she pulled open the front door and found a package on the front stoop. Hey! She stared out at the dark street. Who delivered this? She carried the box inside and started to unwrap it with the brown paper. Is it for me? Neil came hurrying into the living room. Is it a present for me? I don't know, Tamara told him, struggling to tear off the wrapping. A plain box was inside and she pulled open the lid and stared at a doll. An ugly doll. A doll with straw-like white hair, a craggly wrinkled face, and narrow squinting eyes. Oh! Tamara recognized the doll instantly. It was the old woman, the doll maker. She followed me, Tamara realized. She's found me. She's here in this house, with me and all of her evil. Tamara felt cold all over. Her breath seemed to freeze as she stared in horror at the ugly, frightened doll. She nearly dropped the box. What am I going to do? What can I do? The idea popped into her head. She handed the doll to Neil. Bet you can't break this one, she told him. Huh? He gaped at the doll and then back to Tamara. I dare you to break this one, Tamara said. You dare me? Tamara nodded. Bet you five dollars you can't. Oh, it's a bet, Neil replied, and he went to work on the doll. The end. That's going to do it for Tales to Give You Goosebumps by R.L. Stein, special edition number one. But don't worry, come back and we'll do special edition number two next time as I have the next five in the series lined up. Thank you so much. If you wouldn't mind, go ahead and press the like button and subscribe if you haven't already done so. If you change your mind later, you can always unsubscribe. I really do appreciate all that you do to help push my content out there to more kids looking for bedtime stories. If you want to support me in other ways, I do have a Patreon and an Etsy store. Both linked are in the description below. Thanks so much, and have ghoulish nightmare dreams tonight.